Hello and welcome to Super Agents Live. Hey, if you're listening to this episode when it releases on a Monday, uh, it is a fantastic, gorgeous Monday here in San Diego. Hopefully you're having a great day as well. Hopefully your week is shaping up to be an awesome week. This interview today is going to knock your socks off. Uh, that's an old man saying, huh? knock your socks off or like rats. Anyhow, no, it is awesome. Seriously. Uh, this guy I talked to is just an incredibly uh, motivational guy. Um, we talk about how this guy reinvented his business and his career three times adapting to new markets and how he continues to do it. We spent a lot of time talking about why you should go out and take massive action, massive, crazy action, set giant goals, do it every day and scare yourself. We talked about how to build your real estate empire and not spend a nickel. So I'm not going to go over all this stuff. You're going to love it. It's a little bit long. It is about an hour. So, uh, but uh, I'm sure if, you know, I'm sure you're, we're going to fly right through it. So uh, moving on, you know, one thing I've, I've, uh, I've been realizing here is, um, I don't know if you know this, <clears throat> I'll share it with you, but this show uh, is uh, actually pretty popular. Um, we want to get bigger. So you know what? Go out and tell a friend. Uh, and don't hoard this. I actually just had a, a conversation with a guy um, in Victorville recently, this little little town outside of L.A., and he's getting his license. And he told me, I, you know, he sent me an email, and actually we followed up with a phone conversation. He's like, "Listen, man, Super Agents Live is my leg up, and I don't want to share it." And I was like, "Dude, come on, man, go out and share it because you know what? If you're pumped up and you're motivated, it doesn't matter if people learn what you learn." Uh, because you know what? 90% of those people will not go out and implement it. Luckily, you guys have found this show and you guys take your time and listen to it. And you know what? It's it's You're growing. You're growing from all these unbelievable interviews. Listen, since the beginning, uh, uh, when I started doing the show, I've grown. I've grown personally. So, so I'm glad we're in this together. So I want to do a couple things. One, go tell a friend. Do it for the show. Do it for me. Number two, Lots of people are listening on iTunes and Stitcher, which is fantastic, or our RSS feed, if you know how to you know, sign into that. Um, but people are not going to the website. So uh, go to the website. There's, there's uh, you know, I, I write a blog. Uh, you can I, I wrote uh, a little eight-page ebook um, talking about 11 uh, super agent tips. Um, it's not really like that. So the format's not like that if you download it. But uh, go get it. It's pretty good. So, you know, I wrote it. Um, and, uh, I will, um, be expanding that. Uh, so get that. Uh, and the third thing is, you know, come on, man, go to iTunes, leave a rating or review. It helps a show. The more we can, more, uh, ratings and reviews we have, the farther up the line we get. <clears throat> so do that for me. The last thing I want to talk about, I've mentioned a few times is, uh, is we are creating a product. How wh what we're going to do on the show? Listen, one thing you know is coaching is super super important. Uh, not everybody has a thousand dollars a month, or for me, I charge five hundred bucks a month. Not everybody has that, so I'm trying to create a few different things to help you guys uh, wherever you are in your in your learning curve. Number one, as well as as well as uh, you know your your budget curve, right? So the first thing that we're doing is. Uh, is the Facebook group, right? It's a private, you know, it was a secret Facebook group where you could not even search and find it, but I'm changing that. And it's just going to be a private Facebook group where people can see it and search it, but they have to ask to be in, you know, we're letting, we're going to, my goal is to launch that this week. So for everybody who sent me an email, uh, I have them, I've not done a great job with batching them, but we're going to put everybody in it at least the first 50 and after that, right? So uh, I want everybody to be um, a, a part of that, that uh, that I'm building right now is, uh, and so look, look, that's a pay for product, right? So that is like 10 bucks. The second, or, or I'm sorry, it's like 19 bucks, 20 bucks. Uh, the second thing is a group coaching, right? So instead of one-on-one -on -one coaching, maybe get group coaching. So we're gonna start doing mastermind calls where five or seven people, we all get on a call and we talk, we put everybody in the hot seat, we talk about their businesses. Uh, the third thing are webinars or actually products. And that's one thing I'm working on right now. I've interviewed about nine people talking about just, just lead generation. That is it. Uh, and so far I probably have like seven hours of content, which is crazy. Uh, and I, my ideal, what I really want to accomplish is I want to create about 
16 to 20 hours of content, just nothing but Legion, and put it on disks, and uh, you know, and we're going to be... Um, the price on that is going to be about three ninety nine, but I'm going to try to run some deals where, okay, you know, if you like our page, you get it for two ninety nine, right? Or if you give us a rating or review, you get it for you know a hundred bucks off. So uh, I've got a few emails. People who are interested in that. If you're interested, uh, I'll put you on the list, and uh, you know, I'll probably give early people that uh, pay for it uh, uh, like a super deal on that. So hit me up. Stay tuned. Stick with me. This is a great episode. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. On the show today, I am super excited to have our next guest. This guy is a powerhouse. He's been named 30 under 30s, or he was on the 30 under 30 list, but that's put out by Realtor Magazine. He is consistently one of the top 100 REMAX agents and was recently named number 30 in the nation in Wall Street Journal's Real Trends list. And just for clarification, that means that only 29 other people in the nation did more volume than him. I am thrilled to have on the show, Josh Smith. Josh. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Hey, absolutely. So, Josh, you have a, a, a pretty rich and varied background. Maybe, maybe take a minute, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, and what you're doing today. Yeah, so um, you know, I got my real estate license back in 2005, and I always say that uh, you know I, I was so fortunate and blessed to, to get my real estate license at such a pivotal moment. Uh, moment, and the reason why, what I mean by that is. You know, in the short period of time, the eight, nine years I've been licensed, I've been able to reinvent myself completely three different times. You know, I got my real estate license in 2005, hit the ground running, had a lot of success. Uh, as an individual agent, popped 48, uh, 48 closings my first year. Um, started growing my team the second year. Um, and then 2007, you know, the market just took a crash. So we had to reinvent ourselves, readapt, um, and do a, a short sell REO team. Um, grew that. Uh, and then, you know, of course, that, that crash and went away, and now we've been able to regrow ourselves and reinvent ourselves into a, a, a large, um, full-on traditional real estate team. So I've, you know, I've had the, the amazing opportunity to really readapt and, and reinvent and grow three different teams in, in a short period of time, um, which and not only survive each market but completely thrive, which has been, uh, you know, been been a true blessing. So. Um, kind of background before I got into real estate, I was uh, got into real estate at the age of 23. <clears throat> I uh, ran and operated health clubs um, as a district sales manager in the health club industry, and just uh, you know, I actually got into this business um, because I needed and wanted capital to go open up my own health club. And at 23 years old, it's tough to get a $800,000 loan. So I got into real estate thinking, heck, I'll use this as a, as a stepping stone, um, you know, stuff away some cash and then jump back in the gym business. And what I discovered through all of it is I, I love this way more. And, and this has become my, uh, you know, true passion or, or life's obsession, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, so, yeah, just been going strong for uh, about eight and a half, nine years and enjoying every moment of it. The power of timing, Josh. I'll tell you what, man. Uh, first of all, thank thank goodness you didn't get 800 grand in 2005 because your club would have been out of business in three years, right? Yeah. So that fan, you know, again, a lot of being successful is all about sort of being at the right place at the right time. It's amazing to me, Josh, that you said that you were fortunate to get your real estate license in 2005 because, you know, 05, 06 were good years. 07, 08, 09, 2010 were disasters. Most people, most people, I mean, obviously didn't come, they didn't come out. I mean, how did you, uh, so you did 48 closings your first year. Um, how did you reinvent yourself? I mean, I mean, you're a young guy, you're 23 or yeah, no, no. So, so, I mean, you're, so you're 28 now. You're just a kid. Yeah. So I was, uh, yeah, 23 at the time, you know, and, and, uh, uh, 32 now actually. And, um, uh, you know, what was cool about it is I didn't, I, I, I was 
you know, I got licensed but at the time, just you know, at that time, teams didn't really exist. I really didn't have a mentor or anybody to follow. It was just, it was just figuring out every single day on my own, um, just taking massive levels of action. You know, I've always been that guy where, hey, I'm not the smartest, the brightest, but I'm willing to grind and outwork anybody, right? I'm that guy that won't sleep, won't eat, just, just grind, 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 right? And, yeah. uh, um, but I didn't, I, I wasn't able to get comfortable. I didn't have, you know, habits or, or get in the point where I was comfortable. I didn't really know any different. The market started shifting. I only had two years in the business, one year as an independent agent. By the second year, I was growing a team. Then my second year, I had a team of six. Um, and, and since day one, all I was doing was adapting and changing and learning every single day. So I, you know, I, I didn't have that time to get comfortable, let's say, as, as an agent that maybe got licensed in 2000, right. um, you know, and had that five years of, of, you know, or seven years of traditional business and didn't know how to adapt. I mean, that's all I was doing every single day. And, you know, when I say that, that my first year, 48 transactions is, and that's about spending a penny. You know, I was broke. I, I didn't have a penny to my name. It was wow. just going out there, massive levels of action. And, uh, um, and that's a lot what we do today is, is teach an agency. You know, there, there's so much, you know, everybody tries to get you to spend all this money. And, and I would say lead with your wallet. You absolutely do not need to spend money in this business to make money. Um, you got two options. You can either be rich or famous. And, and I've always chose, uh, you know, to be rich. I really don't care about people knowing my name. Um, you know, so even to this day, we're still full on prospecting based business. You know, very, very little marketing, um, you know, compared to, we look at the level of business we do, um, 51 million in, in 2013, you know, most agents that are doing that are, are spending, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a month in marketing and, you know, we're lucky to spend 10, you know, we're just such a hardcore prospecting based business. That's awesome. You know, one of the things I, you know, as, as I heard your story, Josh, that, that you said that you didn't, you weren't, um, when everything fell apart, you didn't have a bunch of habits, routines that you needed to break. You just adapted. And to me, uh, especially your second year, you had a team of six. You're an entrepreneur. You went into this thing as a business, uh, maybe maybe because of your health club background. I don't know. But, but you know, I see you as an entrepreneur and you've, you've killed it. Now you're building teams. You're building a company. Isn't it true? Or, or what do you think about, you know, uh, the difference between people who are just real estate agents and then a guy like you who is a real estate entrepreneur? Yeah, so uh, in, in a lot of it comes down to my background, you know. So, I, <coughs> excuse me, I was in the health club business, but my father owned um, and operated health clubs for 30 years. So I, you know, I grew up in the family business and, and watching, you know, a lot of the back ends of, of, of watching my father uh, operate a small business. So, um, you know, and that's another area I've been really blessed at in my life of, of seeing that. So I've always been a huge believer in knowing your numbers and every aspect of life. So even, right. even for example, when I was personal training somebody, you know, it was journaling and it was figuring out you know, what got you to the results that you wanted so that way we could make it predictable. So, you know, day one of, of real estate, um, and not to the level I do it now, but even day one, it was like, hey, I've got, I've got to track everything. I've got to make this where it's predictable business because every single business is predictable, you know, and, 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 but until you know your numbers and you know those daily activities, you know, for example, I had a gentleman in my office the other day who had some pretty lofty goals for 2014. He wants to net $180,000. And I said, well, what, 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 what's your game plan to get there? How many, how many appointments do you need to make daily? How many phone calls do you need to make daily? You know, not only daily, weekly, monthly. Um, and he had no idea. And I'm like, well, you've got to know that stuff. And the only way to do that is tracking your numbers, making it predictable, um, and knowing the numbers of your business. It's, it's so ungodly crucial, um, you know, in order to do that. So you can build a predictable business, um, you know, and again, I, I see so many agents that, that have a huge month and then all of a sudden they're, they're, they, I think, falls off a cliff and they're not doing well anymore and they don't know what got them there in the first place. Right. You have to know that. It's that, that porpoising effect, right? You, 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 you pop up and you pop back down, right? You, you get deals and you don't have any deals. So in, so in terms of tracking everything, I mean, I, I agree with you that's super duper important because you need to know your cost of sale. I mean, you need to know, you know, if you, if you don't track everything, you don't know if you're following up or not. It, do, do you think this, this uh, inability or, or the laziness or I don't know what you'd say, why don't people track stuff? Is it they don't know how? Yeah. Yep, that's exactly it. So, um, you know, because it, it, it's spooky, it's intimidating, you know. So, um, you know, I went to a conference, for example, one time, and it was all about you know, tracking your numbers and matrix, and, and they're talking about all this stuff, and it, they're making it sound so complex. Um, and, and it was intimidating to me, even somebody, you know, track their numbers more than, than you know, most. Um, you know, and, and yeah, it's the intimidation factor, and it's it doesn't need to be complex. You know, I start out with just whiteboards and Word documents. Um, so I, I think it's it's 
you know, one, the intimidation piece um, a little bit, but more so it's just, it, it's, it's the, they don't know how. Um, and there's nobody out there delivering that content of, hey, here's exactly what you need to be doing. Like, for example, I just started a, what's called an Eight Steps to Success class that we deliver, and it's for every entrepreneur. You know, we bring in, you know, for example, health club owners, insurance agents, lenders. It's, real estate's just a product. It doesn't matter if you're selling real estate or selling flowers. Right. Um, what makes you successful in one is going to make you successful in the others. But people don't know how to. And instead, all this real estate coaching is all about, um, oh, hey, how to go knock on a FISBO door and what to go say. Um, never the true fundamentals um, you know, that are important to every single business. You know, so yeah, it just doesn't exist. And then real estate, for whatever reason, nobody treats it as a business. Everybody, it's it's a job. Right. Um, you know, so it's like, look, if you cannot step out of the business and at least have your business maintained, then you don't have a business. You have a job. You know, so if you're if you're in the, you know writing the daily contracts and doing all this, and the second you stop, income stops, um, then you don't. You absolutely do not have a business. You know, and, and I recognize that really. Actually, when my my wife was. Uh, um, pregnant with our first first child back in 2008, and I was in the delivery room with her, and and you know we're, we're getting set to go in the delivery room, so we just got checked in, and you know, and they're doing a um, you know monitoring and all that, and you know I'm sitting there and I'm I'm having to fire off emails while I'm trying to be there and be supportive for my wife, but I'm thinking all the time, hey, man. if I don't get this done, I can't pay you know flip this bill for the the delivery of my child, and I'm like, hey, at that point, I was like, things massively need to change. And it took some time, but I just started taking daily steps, you know, to, to create a true business. That's awesome, man. I, and look, I've been there. I've, I've, I have three kids and I've, I've been there going into like my wife getting a C-section and my phone is ringing in my back pocket. I'm like, oh, you know, and I feel like you're torn, man. I'm like, I got to get this. This is, a, this, you know, that's, a, that's money right there. I have to do it. Anyhow, I don't want to get sidetracked. So you have this, this program, Eight Steps to Success. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you want to talk about that. Uh, and this is a horrible. I shouldn't ask you that. Look, let's go back to tracking. If people find it intimidating, maybe give us, can you give us and our audience some guidelines of, of how to start right now? Yeah. So, you know, identify the lead sources in your business. You know, so, so in everything needs to be tracked. And what I say by that is just get a notebook and start journaling. So, for example, you know, have, have a prospecting journal. So let's say you're going to start calling expireds. Well, you need to start knowing, hey, what time of the day do you get mo uh, the majority of people to pick up their phones? What time of day do you have the most success with? Um, but then also, you know, how many phone calls do you need to make to, to get a yes? You know, how many no's do you need to get to a yes? Because you know, nobody wants to pick up a phone and, and get yelled at by 99 people to get one yes. You know, but once you have proven numbers, then you get to the point where you're stoked to get 99 no's because right. you know what? Every, every single no, it gets you closer to your yes. Um, you know, so you need to know that. You need to make your, your business predictable. So, for example, you know, we, we use a power dialer called Mojo and does 180 fo uh, phone calls in an hour. Um, and, and we've got it down where, hey, if you use these scripts for every three and a half hours on the system, that equals one live listing, one sign in the ground, one listing. Um, and everybody differs a little bit. We track, so now I've got you know, 25 agents selling on my team. So we actually track these numbers for every individual agent. Um, you know, so when an agent comes to me saying, hey, I want to make 180 grand a year, we plug that and we know exactly what they need to be doing on a yearly basis, a monthly basis, a weekly basis, and even an hourly basis. And then we build out a monthly prospecting plan for them you know, based on their goals and what they want. So, so everything from your prospecting to same thing for, for sign calls. Hey, how many sign calls do I need to get to equal an appointment? And then how many appointments do I need to have to equal a client? And how many clients to equal a closed sale? So that way, when you're setting your goals, you know, when I'm talking to most agents about their goals, they're like, hey, you know, I'm gonna, uh, they deliver their goals. I'm like, well, what's your game plan? To hit those in 2014, it's, well, I'm going to work more hours, be in the office more, and be more focused. And look, I don't doubt that those three things must happen. Um, but however, that's still a losing strategy. You're not setting yourself up for success. You're setting yourself up for failure because there's not a proven game plan. It's no different than, you know, if I'm going to start a diet, if I want to lose 15 pounds in 60 days, I need to have a very specific diet of what I'm going to eat every day and a very specific workout regimen um, so it eliminates all the guesswork. Now it's just, hey, are you committed or are you lazy, which in my opinion is the same thing, to execute to make these happen. Um, you know, so any, any aspect of your business, you know, so how many open houses do you need to sit um, 
you know, to get one closed sale. That, that's the ultimate thing that you need to figure out. So you start tracking, okay, each open house that I do, one, start paying attention to the day and the times so you can make sure that you're as effective as you possibly can on the day and times that you're doing them, um, but track how many people are you getting through. <clears throat> and then how many people are you getting through um, or need to get through to equal one client, one appointment, one client, and then that client to a closed sale. So then every single month, hey, I know I need to do three, you know, three and a half or four open houses to get a closed sale. This business should be 100% predictable and can be if you start tracking your numbers appropriately. Right. So yeah, I agree. And look, I love that. I, I mean, you're, you're coming out of the gate strong here. So let me, let me, let me, uh, so I have a sheet and this is that I got from somebody else. Um, and here's, here's what they, here's the line items. Um, uh, and uh, tell me your thoughts on this. So, um, line one hours prospected per day. She, you write that down contacts per day goals and then actual what you did. Um, contacts per hour goals, what you did. Hours prospected to send uh, contacts to buyer appointments. Hours prospected to BBA signed, uh, BBA appointment ratio, average close commission, income per hour, income per contact, and then she gets down into the the weeks, days, and hours. Like the, I won't get into all that stuff. So is that is that similar to to what you uh, what your sheet looks like for your folks? Yeah, and, and we do everything online. So what, one cool thing is if anybody's not using Google Drive, I highly recommend it. It's free. Um, we do everything on Google Drive because uh, it, just, it just tracks it. So ours is a little different, and then it's not fill-out sheets. Essentially, we can see everything. I can see all the leads coming in, everything else spent. Um, so our agents only have to track each time they get an appointment uh, on the list. But, <clears throat> yeah, that, that's very, very similar to how I started. And it wasn't even it probably as fancy. I did, it was just you know word documents and whiteboards, um, you know, with, with, with essentially that, that same data. Because again, you need to know. So you break it down. Okay, let's say you have eight different sources of, of business. You know, from you know your walk-ins to your sign calls to your open houses to your you know internet leads. And it's not just internet. You need to track. Let's say you're doing Zillow and Trulia. You need to know um, each of those separately. And the reason being is maybe they're both working. But maybe Zillow is giving you a 500% return and Trulia is only giving you a 300% return. You need to be able to make those decisions and where to allocate your money. You know, look, we, we, we work way, way too hard to just be throwing away money. And so many agents are just throwing away so much money. It's absurd. Um, but you need to track each individual lead source, not just, you know, Internet. Right? right. Track every single Internet source that you're doing. But, yeah, I mean, the, the, the point is, is make a list of every, every type of lead source or prospecting method that you've done. And start making it simple in the beginning. Hey, how many hours do I spend on each one of these sources with prospecting um, to equal one appointment? And then for those, for those, those leads as well, how many appointments equal a client? How many clients equal a closed deal? So it's really just for a four-step tracking system that will get you there, but that allows it to be predictable. So now you know, okay, I need to spend you know, an hour on this source a day, um, two hours a week on this source, you know, da-da-da, and that's what gets you to your goal. So no longer is it, is it guesswork. It's, hey, if I want to make 150 grand this year net in my pocket, you know exactly what you need to be doing every single day to make that happen. Brilliant. Brilliant. Let me ask you this. So, so let's say agent A, right, uh, goes and, and uh, does, you know, does the typical agent routine and, and just goes kind of willy nilly. And he might have goals, he might have weekly goals and daily goals, but he's not tracking that. Agent B is very deliberate and he's tracking everything. So he knows, you know, what's working, what's not working, how many calls he needs to make to get an appointment, to get a listing. At the end of the year, how much more successful, percentage-wise, is the, is the tracking person going to be than the non-tracker? Ten times. Easily. Ten, ten times. Unbelievable. Um, and and you know, here, here, here's, here, here's the best analogy I can, only, I can think of. So it, it's, and I call it my recipe analogy. It's, so let's say it's 5 o'clock at night, and I'm starving, right? And I don't really cook, but I'm just starving. So I'm going to run home, and I'm going whip to my, you know, whip up myself a, a good meal. So I grab out the saucepan. I'm grabbing food. I'm grabbing ingredients. And, I mean, I'm working. I'm working hard, right? I'm whipping all this stuff together, yeah. real food, real ingredients. I'm going, and all of a sudden, 30 minutes goes by, and I go to taste it, and it tastes like crap. I've got a crappy product. However, you know, if I had a proven recipe with a proven cookbook, and I followed it to a T, I would use the same amount of food, same amount of energy, same amount of ingredients, same amount of time, money, um, and I would have had a brilliant tasting meal at the end of the day. I would have had a proven, brilliant product. That's the difference. You know, agents need to understand that effort does not pay the rent. Right. So, like, for example, I don't care how hard you're sprinting, how hard you're running. If you're running east, chasing a sunset, you're never going to see it. 
You know, it's not about working hard, and I believe that you're going to have to work hard to be successful, but it's about being effective and, and putting in a proven game plan. The only way to do that is, is by having a predictable business and, and knowing what activities um, produce what results. Yeah, look, that's a beautiful analogy, and I, I, I appreciate you using that. Um, for for I mean, is this is this in terms of your eight pillars? Is this the the first and most important one? I mean, if you, if, if I'm an aspiring agent, and I want to be successful. Is this the first thing where I should put my energy, Josh? No, no. Um, for, first thing is mindset. You know, set, setting your goals, discovering your why, um, and developing your life plan. You know, that's that's the first. So we have ten segments to our goal setting. You know, every aspect of your life. You know, people today spend more time designing a grocery list than they do their life plan. People don't set goals, right? So nobody wants to pick up the phone call or the phone and dial 100 people and get told to get bent by 99 of them. Right. You know, however, if you have massive goals and if your why is strong enough, um, you know, then it makes it easy. Because you know, I, always, I always tell people, you're going you're gonna to either be told no or you're going to have to tell no. So do I want to tell my kids no? Hey, sorry, sorry guys, daddy can't uh, provide opportunities for you. Daddy can't send you to college because I was too much of a wussy to pick up the phone and, and, and take massive levels of, of action to provide opportunities for my family. You know, so you've got to get crystal clear because this business is not easy. Anybody that says it's easy is kidding themselves. It's not an easy business. It's challenging every day, but that's the beautiful part about it, right? Um, so you have to set massive goals. Um, figure out why you're doing this, what your purpose is, get your mindset right, um, because then all of it's easy. Now I can get rejected 99 times and it's no problem because I, I, my purpose is so crystal clear, my vision is so crystal clear um, that everything else becomes easy. So you'll never meet any uber successful person without clear, concise, written goals um, and a crystal clear vision. You know, like for example, I don't believe in burnout. It doesn't exist. If you burn out, it means your goals are too small and you lost sight of your purpose. So that that's step one. Um, and then step two, um, yeah, tracking your numbers. Um, I would say lead source analysis is probably more important than the other tracking because you need to know what actual leads are effective because maybe you're dumping your time into the wrong wrong activities. Um, but then after that, yeah, after you set your goals, set your purpose, set your mindset, then absolutely need to dive right into the tracking. So, so. Uh by the way, the you said something that literally like <clears throat> that was was like life changing, um, and uh, and let me, I'll try to get around to it. This and <clears throat> I ask, I, I commonly ask, how does someone you know? Some, there's lots of days when you feel like you got kicked in the gut. How do you wake up and and do it all over again, right? And I get all kinds of different answers. What you said, Josh, you said that you know. <clears throat> When people, if they th wake up and they think it's too hard, uh, and uh, it, they or they get burnt out, it's not because there's real burnout. It's because their why, their purpose, is not as purposeful or clear to them as it should be. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, your, goal, your goals are too small. Every I get up at four a.m. Right, I'm like, yeah, I got three little kids and two dogs. Crazy business. So. Yep. If I don't get up at four, right, I have zero solitude time. Right? So that's my reflection of my solitude time. So just like anybody else when that alarm goes up at four, man, I'm not, I'm not stoked. I'm not extremely happy, right? But, you know, I roll out of bed. I've committed to myself that I'll never hit the snooze button for the rest of my life. So I roll out of bed at four. I review all of my goals every morning. I go through my goals. I go through um, uh, my affirmations. I go through my, my schedule and I reflect. Hey, everything I did yesterday, did it get me one step closer to my goal, yes or no? And if no, it's got to get off, off my schedule and out of my way. And then I look at today and I reflect those. Hey, is, is everything on my schedule in line with, with my core values, with my life purpose, with what I want to accomplish in this world? And if it's not, it's got to get off my schedule because there's no such thing as success without sacrifice, right? So like for me in my world, happy hour at Buffalo Wild Wings with my buddies doesn't exist. Um, but I truly believe that you can have everything you want in this world um, you know, if you get crystal clear about what it is that you want and start living every moment of your life intentionally. You know, so yeah, by, by man, 4 a.m. rolls up that, you know, yeah, I'm tired like everybody else, but by 4.15, after I've reviewed my goals, reviewed my purpose, re re went through my affirmations, holy crap, man, I'm, I'm the most fired up guy on this planet every single day. I got to tell you, Josh, I mean, the people that work for you and, and work around you, um, that you must be building such an awesome culture in your company. I mean, it's it's crazy. 
Yeah, it's it's our number one asset. Nothing's more important. Our our, our culture it trumps profit. It trumps everything else. Um, you know, because I have massive level, massive goals, right? My my goal is is to revolutionize the real estate industry forever. Three hundred thousand agents at a global level in twenty years. So we're taking massive levels of action. The only way to get there. Um, is it, you know, I ask myself every day, it's, it's not, how do I get to 300,000? It's what type of a leader must I become and what type of leaders, what, what type of an environment do I have to create and attract other amazing leaders, um, you know, right. to, to, to grow that, that organization that big. Yeah. So, so the culture is our number one asset and yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you come to our meetings and it freaks some people out and that's, that's totally cool. Um, but it's, it's nothing to do with real estate. I mean, maybe 10% of it is real estate. The rest of it sounds kind of like a, Tony Robbins, Darren Hardy seminar. I like to imagine. Um, but we're just amping it up, getting people pumped up. Get, you know, so for example, we just had our, every single Monday, we have a two hour uh, mandated meeting every Monday. You know, we just start off right. And, um, you know, we do crazy stuff like our goal setting ceremonies. We have a karate board breaking goal ceremony. You know, we get everybody's Kung Fu fighting, playing, and everybody breaks their karate boards for their 90 day goals. And, you know, we get out there, we get amped up and we support each other. And, you know, cause our, our whole philosophy is, Hey, let's, uh, we're all here to have great careers, but let's, let's help each other live amazing lives as well, you know, and, and let's change lives every single day. Um, and yeah, you get, you get an army of people out there with that same, uh, mindset, man, momentum hits and it's, it's powerful. Wow. I bet. I bet. Hey, have you ever busted one of those karate boards on your head? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a, I got a video of uh, I have it. I got a video of my sales manager doing it though. Hey, let's go back to the why real quick because yes, uh, you know that is the number one thing. If you know your why, you know everything else will fall into place. How you know, and that's pretty tough. How does someone? How do I find that? I mean, I I know my why, but for for somebody in the audience, how do they find their why when they're when they're you know all they're thinking about is hey you know I I want to have more uh, freedom in my life, more time. I want to control my own destiny. I mean, that's, that's their why. Or maybe it's like, hey, I want to have a Ferrari and a 7,000 square foot house. That's their why today. How do they get to their real purpose, their real why? Yeah, so, um, and, and you're gonna have, you can have multiple, multiple whys. So, like, our, our goal setting is 10 segments. So, you know, family, health, um, you know, career, but then also, you know, future wealth, financial, spouse, and anything other, <laughs> um, you know, faith, spiritual, giving back, fun adventures, self-development. So each one can have different whys, and they can integrate as well. Um, but, yeah, we talk on our team that, hey, willpower doesn't exist, but why power does. If your why is strong enough, you're going to commit to anything. Um, and, yeah, at different times in your life, your why and your goals are going to change. You have 16, it's, hey, man, all I want to do is get a car. Right. You know, and then it's, you know, so in every aspect of your life, it's going to be different. Um, but people that don't know, and, and this is why, you know, we do, we do our goal setting segments together, and everybody has a goal buddy on the team where they go through an accountability partner. Um, and, and it's just, yeah, because you may not know today, you may not have goals. And, and anybody that wants our goal sheet, um, I'm happy to share it with you guys. I can I can email you a copy if you want to share it with your listeners. Um, yeah. You can show them exactly what we do and how we do it with that same worksheet. Yes. Um, you know, but it's just about asking yourself, you know, why and what enough times, and you always come to the answer. Like, for example, if you're setting health goals, well, why do I want that? Well, you know, what, why? What, what, what is it that I want, and why do I want it? If you ask yourself enough times, eventually you're going to come to it. But it's about thinking hardcore and deep. Like, for example, I had a gentleman on the team that um, wants to lose some weight. And, uh, you know, and start taking care of himself physically. He just never has. And, and you know, he has some health issues. And he's got, he's, got, uh, he's got young daughters. And, you know, at first it was, well, let's, let's, dig, let's dig in your why, buddy. You know, let's get in your why. And it's, well, you know, I just want to do this and be healthier. No, that's not big enough. Really think about it. And, and, and we started, you know, I started working with him on it. I'm like, okay, you've got daughters, right? He's like, yeah. I said, well, what about this? What about I want, I want to be here long enough to walk every one of my daughters down the aisle. I want to be here to, to run, play, and have fun with my grandkids, not be confined to a wheelchair and have poor health, right. but be here to go, you know, get that hardcore with your why. Just like when I used to personal train, my clients that had that hardcore why were always the most successful. Clients that came and said, oh, I just want to lose 15 pounds just because, you know, they, 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 they typically were going to fail. But that, that you know, person that came in like, hey, you know, my, my you know, father just died of, of a, a heart attack, and I've got high cholesterol myself, and, you know, I just had my first grandkid last year, and I want to be here to see my grandkids, and now now they have that hardcore a why a purpose that's bigger than themselves. Um, so just ask, asking yourself why and what, and then the thing is, is we're never too old to continually asking ourselves, hey, what do we want to do when I grow up? What do I want to do? And and you got to ask yourself a very very tough questions. One question I always ask myself, and I encourage my teammates to ask myself themselves, is, hey, I'm on my deathbed right now. 
I'm on my deathbed. What regrets am I going to have on life? What, what am I going to regret not going after? Um, the number one regret when people die is not living the life they wanted out of fear of criticism for others. You know, don't let that be you. The only regret you should have when you die is that you wish you had more time to spend with your loved ones, which you can't control. Everything else, it's like, look, I left it on the field. I crushed it. I killed it. Gave it all I had. Um, but you got to start asking yourself those questions all the time. And when you're reflecting, you know, thinking about those hard questions. You know, most people, I think, just, just to choose to sleepwalk through life, get through the day, not get from it, because it's easier than asking yourself those hard questions. But you need to do it, because at the end of the day, blink of an eye, life's brief. And if you think it's not, you're kidding yourself. You know, so ask yourself, hey, if I'm on my deathbed right now, what am I going to regret not doing? And if, you, if a regret pops up, well, get to work, man, because life is brief. Bang. I'll tell you what. So, so I have that sort of a, one of the deathbed things for me and that I got a long time ago. And my deal was, you know, I, I grew up being a rock climber, right? And being a, a, a mountaineer and I've done, I've done Shasta. I've done, I've done a bunch of 14,000. I haven't, I have not done anything over, uh, 14,000, right? So whatever, I'm not going to get into mountaineering, but so <clears throat> For my first, uh, my my first expedition, I created a shirt, and and my slogan was, "I never want to say right when I'm dying, Josh. I never want to say I wish I would have, right? I, you know, so you know, and and for me that 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 slogan, that mantra has has pushed me to take massive action and to take risks. And you know what? Some I've lost sometimes, but most of the time they pay off. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I don't know why, but I always have this vision of being on uh, – sitting on the patio with my wife when we're like 95 years old. And I want to like look at her, look her right in the eyes and be like, high five, baby. We did it. We killed it. <laughs> we, yeah. we crushed it, honey. Now, I don't want to have that conversation of, uh, you know, we, our lives could have been so great. We should have, would have, could have. No, BS, dude. I never want to have that conversation um, with my wife when we're that age. And I don't know why I always vision that, but it's like, yeah, dude, I want to give that – Hardcore crush high five and like we crush it, baby. Oh, that's inspiring. So look, you're 32, Josh. I mean, how did you get this? You know, I mean, because I am definitely feeling sort of an Anthony Robbins kind of tone here. But but yours is, uh, you know, this knowledge, this wisdom that you're you're dropping on us right now is yours. I mean, I can tell that's yours. You've gotten to these revelations by yourself. How did you, you know? Tell me how you got to where you're at right now. How did you, did you craft your mindset to this? Um, you know, it, daily daily work. So just one of my goal setting is is uh, segments of self development. You know, right? So you know, how do you bring more value to to the marketplace? You know, how do you go from making twenty bucks an hour to forty bucks an hour? It's one hundred percent by increasing your value. So, um, you know, as soon as I got to high school, I started. Uh, you know, just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of a geek, man. I just developed this passion for, for learning and self-development, self-growth. And, you know, I ended up dropping out of college, went to uh, change my major 13 times in the first year. And I was so freaking bored, um, not with learning, but just with formal education. Um, and, but I found myself in libraries just stuffing my, you know, I, I first read Thinking Real Rich when I was 19 yeah. and reread it about six times. And that was kind of the foundation of it, right? Then from there, it just was more and more and more. And, and, and surrounding yourself with, um, you know, for example, I don't do real estate coaching, right? But I do certain coaching with Darren Hardy and Grant Cardone and, you know, um, um, diff different types of mindsets to keep my mind clear. So, um, you know, so it's, it's daily work. It's, it's the law of diminishing intent is, is, is true. It's gravity. Um, you know, negativity will find you every day, every, every way you look, but you got to go searching for positivity. So like on our team, you know, we, we, we have everybody, hey, first thing is your car becomes a mobile library. So it takes two things now for your car to go gasoline and, and a self-development book on tape. Because you know, your average person drives uh, 12,000 miles, you have 300 hours a, a year behind the wheel. That's 300 hours of self-development, bettering your mindset, bettering yourself and your skills and your abilities. That's equivalent to two semesters of college. Yeah. Well, luckily, us in real estate, we spend about three times that, right? Um, you know, so we always call it, we call it our E versus E ratio. And I think I stole this from Brian Tracy, right? But um, always, always check out, hey, what's my entertainment versus my education ratio? And you know, your average person spends 95% of their free time on, on entertainment. We're uber successful, spend 95% of their free time on self-education. And, you know, just always analyzing that and going after it. And then, you know, then being very careful of your associations. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 you know, society kind of plays down on if you live in a bubble, However, I want. I always say I want to live in the tightest bubble that exists, right? So I'm gonna everything. I'm gonna choose what goes in there, what comes out, every aspect of it. So I choose my relationships in my life very, very closely. 
look, if they're not challenging me and helping me uh, achieve my goals and on a support system and vice versa, I've got to be that same friend back, um, then I don't associate with them. So surround yourself with like-minded people, but you, it's got to be daily work. I mean, right now I probably spend 60% of my time um, on self-development, self-education. Sounds weird, but I try not to work in my business more than five hours a day so I can spend the other seven hours working on myself, um, which sounds funky and, and kind of twisted, but that's – yeah, that's how I, I choose to uh, choose to live my life to help me get to the next level. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, look, I mean, you know, you are designing your life. You are crafting your life. You're, you know, you, you are not letting life, you know, I, I love that bubble uh, analogy as well, you know, and the whole personal development uh, piece, you know, everybody that's listening to this show right now, you know, is following that path of yours. So, so let me ask you this, because <clears throat> there's a little bit of a conflict in my mind, a little bit. Um, so you have your why, you know, it becomes right. This your Napoleon Hill, your, your, you know, your hot burning desire, hot heat or burning desire, however he exactly says it. Um, what about work life balance, right? So if, if I'm super focused on my why and I'm out there just murdering it every day, like breaking down doors to, to, to get it, you know, what happens to my, to, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it should work. Should there be such a thing as work life balance or, or no? No, it do, it doesn't exist, right. right? So I think it's BS. I think it's um, it's it, you're adding another task to your plate. If you're trying to balance your work and your life, you're just adding another task to your already huge task list. So for me, at the end of the day, it's all life. So why not integrate? You know, so so work and life are all integration. So um, for example, you know, I do all my goal setting with my wife, and and my kids know what's going on every step of the way. We share our goals. We do vision boards together. Uh, my kids are involved with it. Um, you know, however, <clears throat> it's not about working more hours. That, that, that's, that's the biggest thing that people can't get over is, is just like, for example, when you go to sleep at night, it's not how many hours you sleep. It's how many, how, how many effective hours you're actually in REM sleep. So, it, so it's figuring out how are you most effective, figuring out that 20% of your time that, that brings you 80% of your income and eliminating and delegating that 80% that only brings you 20%. Right. So every day of my life is, is so, you know, every, everything I'm doing has to be very effective. So I have three little kids. I've got a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a 10-month-old. Um, I spend a ton of time with them. I spend um, every single night, 6.30 at night, I'm done. I'm at home every single night, dinner with the family, phone, electronics, everything shut off. It's engaged time. Put the kids to bed at 8.30. Um, now I have uh, an hour of uh, quality time I spend with my wife. Um, so, so, you know, the balance, and again, I don't believe in trying to figure out a work-life balance because it doesn't exist. Um, you know, just try to figure out how to integrate with, with all of life, right? So, um, but what it does is, so I, I'm in the office every single morning at 7 a.m. I get up and hit the gym first, do some things there, get in the air at 7. So I know every day I've got from 7 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. to get things done. And I'm against the clock every every day, right? So, um, you know, it's like what's the most efficient uh, work week of anybody's life? It's the, the week before you go on vacation, right? Because you start – you're right. focused, right? Because you have limited time. Well, that's how I w operate every single day of my life is, is that hardcore time. I mean it's – it's because I can get done now. You know, everything I do in my life is intentionally. So, for example, I eat a certain way, not because I love eating freaking raw broccoli and raw nuts and drinking two gallons of water a day. No, it's because I need a certain amount of energy so I can go out there and get into an hour what it takes the average person three hours to do. But then I want to be able to crush it 12, 14-hour work days and then get home and be an amazing father to my kids and then put my kids to bed and be an amazing spouse to, to my wife, amazing husband to my wife, um, and then get up every single day and repeat it and do it over and over and over. Um, and then, the time, yeah, I mean, do I wish I had five hours a day with my kids? Sure. Um, but also as a father, it's also my moral obligation to become successful, to provide opportunities for my family. So, you know, do I have less time than I'd love? Yeah, a little bit, but I make sure that that time counts. I'm not sitting here, you know, I watch no TV. So I'm not bitter sitting and watching TV. I'm not on my, you know, texting or looking at Facebook. That two hours every night I have my kids is 100% um, focused, uninterrupted. You know, I'm there in every moment with them. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's how I kind of handle the, the whole balance thing is, Figuring out what's important in your life, what do you want out of life, getting crystal clear on that in your vision, um, and then living every single uh, day of your life 100% intentionally, and then you don't have to worry about balance because you can have it all. Uh, dude, I'm in San Diego, and if you were in San Diego, Josh, you'd be my new best friend. <laughs> I, I would I would trail you around and look I'm older than you are I'm 44 and I've had I've had lots of successes but but uh, your your p 
positive energy. I mean, I think just what what you, one thing you said earlier, you said you are careful about who you associate with. And it reminded me of a quote by Jim Rohn. And he says that you are the average of the four people that you spend the most time with. And if you can level up, if some of the people in our audience can level up and, and spend time with guys like you, Josh, you know what? It's, it's not going to take them very long to to change, to have a whole new look on life and, and be successful. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's, uh, it's, you know, like Zig Ziglar says, you know, motivation doesn't last, but in his bathing, that's why you need it daily. So you got to be, we all have those weak moments. You know, I have weak moments and my teammates and bring me up and kind of slap me around and get me refocused. You know, we all do. So that's what's so important to guard those associations. Um, and then, like I said, you know, your car's a mobile library. So, you know, I own every single Jim Rohn CD that exists. Um, and, and I've listened to them all probably a hundred times, you know, of, of always keeping that stuff front of mind. So, so then again, it's, it's, front of mind awareness and living every aspect of your life intentionally. So let's talk about, let's talk about a typical day because you know, you wake up at four, uh, similar to me, I'm up about four 30 and I've just been doing it for so long that I don't have an alarm clock. I just, that my body just wakes up. But so you're up at four, you review your goals, uh, you review your goals, your affirmations. And there's one other thing you do. And I, I you were talking too fast. I couldn't write it down. Yeah. So, so reflection, reflection. Right? So for okay. example, one, one of the biggest mistakes I, 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 I learned that I was making in my life was not reflecting enough, you know, cause what happens if you don't reflect then you're just getting through the day, you're not getting from it. So how does somebody go through 10 years of their life, their happiness is the same, their weight's the same, their relationships are the same, their bank account's the same, 10 years pass, but everything's the same. How the hell does that happen? Well, it's because they didn't reflect. They, didn't, they never got from the day, never grew into a better person each day. Um, they, they just got through it. They just slept, walked through life. So I'm like, well, that can never happen to me because it, to, to hit my dreams, visions, and goals, I have to get from every single moment that I possibly can. So my routine is, yeah, get up 4 a.m., um, you know, it gives me 15 minutes to get dressed, you know, do my th- whatever, get downstairs. I review my goals, uh, my, my life purposes. Um, and then I start analyzing and I go through my affirmations and I start analyzing my yesterday's schedule and my yesterday's journal to make sure that I grow from everything. And did I make a mistake? Yeah. Cause every single day I have something on my calendar that probably shouldn't have been there. Um, but I learn, I grow from it and I make sure that I grow each day. You know, it's not a flip of a switch that every, all of a sudden your life's going to change, right? It's, it's working every single day. So then after a decade, people don't even recognize you anymore. You know, it may have taken a decade to fully transform, transform, but every single day, if you're getting, you know, a percent better every single day, well, and you take weekends off after three and a half years, you're a thousand percent better. Right. Um, you know, so yeah, so I do that. I hit the gym every morning at five thirty. Um, I'm in the office by seven. Um, and then every day is a little different. Um, you know, so, so my role in my company now, um, outside of normal CEO roles, right. Making, you know, financial decisions and system decisions and, and when we need to allocate certain things. Um, but it's all pretty much just the coaching and the, and the, the, the motivation element. And I do a ton of public speaking. Um, and, 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 uh, you know, I kind of just decided, hey, what, what do I truly love? What, what is my true passion? And that's the, that's the coaching, the motivation, all the amping people up and, and, and the speaking, right? So um, everything else I pretty much delegated, you know. So, for example, you know, the accountability piece, I have a, 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 my vice president does all the day-to-day, you know, hey, are you hitting your goals? Are you hitting your numbers? He's inspecting what we expect every single day. Um, everything else is pretty much delegated. So now it's just a series of, of meetings and then growing the business, you know. So right now we're, we just, for example, because we're hiring about 20 people every single month, we just switched to doing group interviews. So I hold those hmm. um, because we'll have about 15 to 20 people um, weekly in those group interview sessions, um, you know. So so adding to it and growing the business is, is uh, um, yeah, so every, every single day, day to day. But I live my life 100% by a calendar, you know, because you can, you got two options. What I see most agents do, and unfortunately, but this is how they operate, is they become so reactive, you know, they're, they're in the middle of prospecting, um, which should be their, their most valuable time during their day, right? But all of a sudden, they get a sign call for, you know, half a million dollar cash buyer. They drop everything for this maybe. They drop the sure thing for a maybe. They become reactive. Um, you know, so, so your average person, for example, gets, a, gets, a te- or gets interrupted every six minutes. Text message, email, whatever. They get interrupted every six minutes, and it takes 11 minutes to recover from each interruption. You know, so your average person... It's, it, it, in corporate America, especially, um, your employer is only getting about 28 minutes of true, focused, effective work out of each employee. 
Um, per what? Per of, hour or per day? No, per day. So oh because they're, 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 again, so they're, you're, you're interrupted every six minutes on average. It takes 11 minutes to re- recover yeah. and become fully focused. So, you know, it's building those barriers, staying uber focused. Um, so little things, you know, we, we talk to all the people, like I, I have every alert on my phone's off, text messages, emails, you know, because this, every text message, every email is somebody else's agenda for you. Right. Um, and when you're in a reactive state, you're, you're always going to be a slave to somebody else's agenda and, and never truly, um, you know, the only true freedom to your time is being in that proactive state all the time. So until you control your schedule, and the only way is, is by being proactive. So Stephen Covey, Dr. Covey, in his Seven Habits of, of Highly Effective People, he talks a lot about staying in that um, important but non-urgent state. <clears throat> so we work with all of our people, and I make sure every day, you know, with my reflection in my schedule, because I'm, I'm focusing on it so much, um, that I'm always there. So I control my own schedule. I control my own days. Um, then I'm proactive. And that's how you become a thousand times more effective than anybody else. So I, you don't necessarily need to work 16-hour days. If you stay in that proactive state, I know guys working 16 hours a day that are accomplishing crap because they're reactive all day. And are they getting some results? Okay. I mean, mediocre results, but, you know, we're, we're not interested in mediocrity here. You know, you got, you got to make sure that you're being proactive with – with uh, and again, living every aspect of your life intentionally. Look, I love it. We have a problem, Josh, and the problem is this: is you have way too much ultra stupid good advice here. We are we are forty four minutes in, and uh, we have to start wrapping up. But how do we get you back on? You you have the, you have a program that you offer to do, and it's a two hour two hour. W- can we get you on? And will you do that with me again? Because this this seriously this is. This is like top three. You are top three, and I've had I've had big big names on this show. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I greatly appreciate those kind words, man. It means a lot to me. And, and yeah, I'm uh, you know my my biggest passion in life is sharing and helping other agents. So I, I'm happy to help anytime. And uh, yeah, we can put that on where it's you know it's it's about two straight hours, and that's with no questions. Um, you know, and then if we want to add in the Q and A, I'm happy to do that. And, and if, you know, however you want to work that, but yeah, the eight steps of success, right? It goes from a, you know, in depth of the mindset, the goal setting, then to, um, how to lead, lead generate and how, how to, your lead source analysis, tracking your numbers. And the cool thing about it is, um, and I don't know if there's a way to make this available for your listeners, but, uh, you've got about a 90, um, 90 uh, uh, slide deck presentation that goes with it that shows true examples in my business. Because it's one thing to sit up here and talk about it all day, but when you able, when you sit down and say, okay, here's exactly what they're doing in their business, and here's a, a picture of, of how they do it every day in their business, it starts to allow other agents, um, you know, that that idea of how, how do I incorporate this in my business today and start putting to work right now today. So yeah, yeah I absolutely love to do that for you. Okay, that's awesome. That. All right, so let's let's here let's wrap this up uh, really quickly. We're at Ask the Agent Round. Okay, so three questions. <clears throat> If I, I again, I'm an aspiring agent. Um, I'm either new or I've been at it for a while. I'm, 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 but I'm just seeing mediocre results. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go out and get today? Um, oh God, that's a tough I, one. I know it's 10, tough. Okay, so 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 okay, 10x um, is probably the best book you can get for for a new agent starting out because it's all about massive levels of action, um, and you don't need money. That's the thing. Big, most agents don't realize is they go, oh, I got to have all this money. You don't need a penny. Marketing is for agents that are either too busy or too lazy to go out there and prospect, right? So um, you don't need money to make massive amounts of money in this business. 10X by Grant Cardone is all about taking massive, massive levels of action. I love it. And is that somebody that, that well, let's, well, so you work with this guy, Grant Cardone. Like, no, I mean, I, I've done some coaching with him. Okay. Um, he has nothing to do with real estate. It actually has more to do with the auto industry. Um, but yeah, I met him in, in Vegas a few years ago at an event. He was at that time one of the most motivational, inspirational guys that uh, I I'd met with. So yeah, I do uh, some coaching with him, follow all stuff uh, very closely. I mean, he's a pretty amazing, brilliant guy. And he's not just this motivational speaker. I mean, he, he you know, has his own half a billion dollar enterprise. Um, and he just started writing books to give back to other entrepreneurs. But he's actually living, eating, breathing it every day on a massive level. Wow. I can't believe it. so. Our deal, I'm breaking in here. This is, this is sort of a, a little message to you guys. Um, Grant Cardone, today is Monday when this is airing. I'm interviewing Grant Cardone today. This, this guy is a really, really amazing guy. If you want his book, I just, I just did a deal with Audible. It's an affiliate program, um, but I wanted to try to get, you know, we always do a book and I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to get some of these books. Now, some of the books that are recommended on the show are 
30 bucks. Not everybody's got 30 bucks to just blindly go and throw on a book. So I did a deal with Audible, uh, and you can get a copy uh, of this book or another book that's been recommended on the show for free. You can, and, and here's the link you use. It is audibletrial.com. So A-U-D-I-B-L-E, audibletrial.com slash Super Agents Live. Go sign up, get this book, get it for free. Uh, and uh, when you do that, Look, the show gets like 15 bucks. So what? Um, it doesn't cost you any more money. And you know what? Get the book for free. Listen to it and cancel it. Get a free book. Okay, back to the show. All right, let's talk about an internet tool. Do you have an internet tool like an Evernote that you're in love with that you can share with the audience? Um, yeah, so, so you know, I got asked this, this question yesterday as well. Of, of what's your best tech, tech tip, right? So we, we're doing so many different things with you know, call fire, I love call fire for tracking and, and blast texting and um, different tracking methods. But my, my still my favorite one, I think the most important one is your tasking tool. You know, I use real pro systems. It doesn't matter if you use real pro or wise agent or um, constant contact or contactually, but that tasking tool is so critical because the one thing is your mind will fail you. So you got, you got to rely on systems, right? So, and you look at today, 88% of home buyers and home sellers said they love their realtor, would absolutely use them again. Only 11% do. And it's because most agents forget the number one rule in sales, which is the fortune is in the follow-up. So right. you have to have a great tasking system, be so ungodly aggressive with your follow-up. Um, but I, I still swear today that there's no better tool in my business than that tasking system, which I know is kind of a not too cool and techy and then kind of old school, but I don't think there's anything more important. I love it. And I'll tell you what, uh, nobody, nobody's ever brought this kind of thing up. So I'm, I absolutely love it. Last question, Josh. Um, you have lots of routines, lots of personal habits, but is there one personal habit that you think has contributed to your success? Um, I would say the, the biggest personal habit I have is, is uh, which I don't know if it's a habit or what, what you want to call it, but set, setting massive goals. Got yeah, it. Set, just, just thinking big. Um, you know, you're not doing yourself or the world any favors by playing small. You only live once. You have one shot at this world, man. And then why not you? You know, so, so for example, I got a young lady that works on my team and we're doing our vision boards as a team. And she wants to buy a plot of land in the Philippines where she's from. And the only picture she could find was of a mountain. And she's like, well, I can't own a mountain. I'm like, why not? Like you're 22 years old. People own mountains in this world. Why, why can't you own a mountain in this lifetime? I'm like, the only reason you won't or can't is because of that limitation you set in your mind. Go out there and do it. If you want it, you go out there and do it. And, and it's just, you know, look, again, we only live once. Life's so brief. Set massive, crazy goals. Who cares about criticism? People, people, you know, people may make fun. Who cares? It's your yeah. life. It's not their life, right? So set massive goals, and, and I think that's – you know, always my biggest, I set huge, massive goals that freak the crap out of me every single day. But if you're not afraid every day of your life, you're living your life way too safe. So set, setting massive goals, man, and, and just uh, thinking huge. I, I feel like kicking in my walls right now. That's how pumped up I am, <laughs> Josh. Seriously. Josh, it, thank you so much for coming on the show. It has been unbelievable. Uh, let's sign off. Tell everybody where they can find you. Give, give them your, your whatever you want to give them, your website, your phone number, whatever. Where can we find you, Josh? Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, out in Arizona. My direct email um, comes directly to me is Joshua, J-O-S-H-U-A, at soldbyjoshua.com. Um, my, my website, soldbyjoshua.com as well, but the best way to reach me is, is through email. Um, yeah, if you guys ever need support, help, happy to help any of you anytime. Super cool guy. Hey, Josh, this, uh, this, is, my, this is my new sign-off line I'm working with, but it's uh, until next time, live accountably. Yep. Love it, man. Love it. Pleasure being on the show, guys. Thanks, Josh. See you, bud. All right. Bye-bye. Wow. What an inspiring guy. Uh, Josh is a really great guy. I'm glad he came on the show. Uh, He's got tons of wisdom, and I do plan on taking him up on uh, creating that, you know, giving to you guys that two-hour event. I'm struggling a little bit with how to do it. Um, Because ideally, I'd love to put on, uh, this is what I want to do, and I've never done a webinar but I want to do a webinar where you know we put Josh on camera. I promote the webinar, and obviously it'll be for free for all you guys. I'm not, I wouldn't charge for this, but you know, do a webinar, promote it where all you guys know about it, uh, and then you can jump on the webinar, listen to it live, and then be able to ask Josh questions afterwards. So once I figure out how to do that, um, 
uh, I'll let you guys know. Uh, but in order to get on this webinar, I have to have your email address. The way to do that is go to the website, superagentslive.com and uh and download my my little ebook there i get your uh i get your email address i'm building my list you guys should be building yours and we'll let you know hey go tell a friend leave a rating and review on itunes and uh stick with me where the rest of this week is gonna be awesome until next time you know the sign off line guys live accountably or just stay focused all right see ya let's go